France this summer at, at the Chard Cathedral. Oh, and then Christ figure has the bird on his hand, and I thought, oh, this was such a good moment. And we yeah. can see over here. Mm -hmm. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so my project, as you saw in the little announcement, is, is an ongoing residency because everything I do takes me forever. And um, like for instance, this painting takes, took me I think five or six weeks to make. So um, like everything takes a long time. So this is normally ongoing. But what I'm, what I'm hoping to achieve eventually is a big installation that will have on each wall will have um, something like this, like a big thing that's on the wall, and then there are three paintings on this thing. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So three paintings. They're all 30 by 40. So this is one of them. And I will tell you more about the process. Mm -hmm. And then in the room as well, there's going to be some work of like well, floating sculpture. I, I'll show you pictures. Mm -hmm. um, it's all, for me, it's about I, I like to live life from the end goal. And so I love reading the, the uh, Apocalypse of St. John. Mm -hmm. And that has all these. Um, incredible interactions of when angels come to humans and give us tasks and show us things and strengthen us in our becoming as we work towards the new Jerusalem, which is really like a clarification of our astral body. And so this whole, um, and then at the very end of the apocalypse Christ says, I am the shining morning star, and I think the essence of our I could be summed up in that sentence, I am the morning star. <coughs> so our I, our true I, our higher self, is really like the morning star. And so in this installation, I want to bring some star-like elements that will um, kind of bring people into connection with their stariness. And, um, and then the wings is something as the, the angels or the, yeah, or also the unfolding of our true higher self that rises above circumstance and rises above <coughs> everything that kind of holds us down. And I think wings and things have um, captured the imagination of people for. Um, Can you just, <coughs> just push your space, just bar, space bar on your computer? Yeah. Oh, right. oh, anyway, so oh. now I'm just going to take you a little bit through my process. Um, what my what my thinkings are, okay? So this is the Nike of Summer Race. You're all familiar with it in um, in Paris and France, and. Um, it's interesting to see, I saw it this summer, and what I found so interesting is how many people flock to the Louvre. It's the most visited museum in the world, and the three pieces that people come and see are the Nike of Samothrace, the Mona Lisa, and the Venus de Milo. And they're all depictions of the, I would say, the eternal feminine, the Ice Sophia, everything that really kind of lift, lifts up, us up. And then, of course, they also go and see all the other stuff. But those are like the three flagship pieces that really draw people. And I think this, this unbelievable wing-like freeing gesture that the Nike has um, epitomizes our human striving and our rise above circumstance and everything that holds us back. And then, well, this is bad, sorry, like a small picture of an angel with wings. And then, of course, we know about um, the phoenix rising above the ashes. Um, this is a piece by a um, contemporary Japanese artist. She's a ceramic kind of artist. And 
I feel Satoko Fushikasa, this is at the Metropolitan Museum. And um, and I think she makes these kind of... Um, How big is it, Martina? Not very big, yes. And it's hand-built. And there's no amateur in it. It's, it's really quite crazy the way she does it. Um, this is another view of it. Is it wood or plastic? It is, it is porcelain clay. And then there's a white slip over it. And it also takes it takes so many months to make one piece. And all of the museums in America are clamoring to have one of the pieces. This is in the art museum in Portland. And so I feel she has tried and find find like a modern language um, for the angel or Nike image with her forms that are so um, they rise themselves up. And this is a drawing that one of my seventh graders made, and it won first prize at the Columbia County Fair out of all high school students um, in the area from seventh grade on. And what I found so interesting about it is it's a copy from a picture. There was much more original work that I had actually entered, and I was surprised this won the first prize. And the only way I can imagine it is because people were so captured by the imagination of this winged creature. Mm -hmm. That I think, and of course, you know, for a seventh grader, that's good work. Um, and then this is a little bit a very super rough model of my installation. <laughs> huh. um, different kind of views, and I'm very much working on these wing-like shapes. And, um, and then clouds. Are those miniature or big pieces? Uh, what? Are those miniature or big pieces? This? <coughs> it's very small. Mm -hmm. And so I'm having a very hard time, and I've tried and failed many times to figure out a light enough material that will give me enough flexibility to make what I want to make. But I think I'm going to do something. But this is the model. This is only yeah. the model. This is just the model. Yeah, this is only the model. Yeah. And eventually, uh, you know, so that people can move around the room where they will feel these wings like benevolent uh, presences <coughs> that they can be with. And then, of course, nature has the most beautiful inspirational shapes where you feel the way the angels are walking into the etheric, which is the fluid part of um, of nature and imprint these beautiful shapes on it and that has been a big part of my inspiration. And then I just want to take you through um, the process of like different stages of a painting. And hmm? that's my, yeah, that's the beginning of one of my paintings. And um, so very fluid and it also came out of a meditation of um, that was from the Gospel of St. John, um, I am the true vine. Is that how you say that in English? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the life kind of pulsing through. And I think it also has a little bit from this particular cloud shape, there are a little bit of elements in that. And then these are just different stages as it shapes itself more and more. Ooh, terrible. And I have the original here, I can show you the original. Um, and so these kind of pulsing rivers of life. And then there are more kind of light and wing and elemental shapes. That's the Oregon coast in Yakats, Oregon. And then for the next piece, I really looked at these shapes right here that the water made in the sand. And you can see how there are these wonderful kind of wing-like shapes, right? <coughs> and so at night I often sit and I um, and I draw these shapes to imprint them on my or to make them part of my vocabulary of form, so that I really learn how nature works. And then this is a painting that came out of that. <coughs> And then this is the finished piece, and one really needs to see this with her eyes. Nice. Um, and I felt also with um, with the pieces that that um, 
Jason Jason showed all the water and light and fluidity and clouds. Um, yeah, this is not so dissimilar from what he had been doing. And then this is me trying to figure out these kind of wing-like shapes. Um, and this is a piece I've made a number of years ago, and I guess this whole theme of wings has been with me for a long time. And I think that's the end of the show.